Good morning. It's John Gilkison here. Uh, I'm going to shoot this uh, video I promised on the RAV4 plug-in hybrid electric. Um, as many of you may know, we've been looking at uh, buying a new plug-in hybrid electric vehicle next year at this time. And uh, we currently own a Ford uh, C-Max Energy, which is got 20 miles of electric only range and we've had it since uh, late uh, 2016 and uh, we want to go ahead and sell it on or trade it in and get a, a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle that's a little larger has a little more interior room and has more electric only range uh, currently our plug-in uh, has 20 miles of electric only range and it accounts for about 60% of our local driving is done in EV only mode. So this leaves 40% for gasoline. So it's, it's really reduced our gasoline consumption and got us a, gave us a real taste for driving electrically. And, uh, we live in the desert Southwest and, uh, in southern New Mexico and the charging infrastructure is not that great around here so unless we buy a Tesla we really can't travel in an electric car and our other vehicle happens to be a, a Ford pickup truck and it's not fuel efficient for traveling either so if we bought a pure battery electric vehicle we'd probably have to travel in the pickup truck and so that would uh, kind of undo all the savings that we'd have because we travel at least about 3,000 miles a year. So, currently, I've got some stats written down here. The, the Energy has a 7.6 kilowatt hour battery pack, of which 1.1 of that's for hybrid drive, and they keep one kilowatt hour in reserve to protect the battery. It gets... Um, uh, 38 miles per gallon in the city and about 37 miles per gallon on the highway, somewhere in that neighborhood. I don't have the exact figures, but uh, that's been our experience. And it has 188 total horsepower. It only has 141 horsepower with the gasoline engine, which is an Atkinson cycle engine. And it only, it only has 47 horsepower in the electric motor. And it's just beyond amazing what a 47 horsepower electric motor can do. It can propel that uh, uh, nearly 4,000 pound vehicle up to 75 miles an hour in, in, in a very short time and it'll pull all the way. It's, it's beyond belief. If that was a 47 horsepower gasoline engine, that car would be a dog and it's not. So, uh, the base price of the vehicle was about 35000 but we got really lucky on that. Um, they had one left on a lot down at Cas Casa Ford down in El Paso, and it had been there a year, and we stumbled across it, and they had it marked off, 30% off. And we ended up getting it for $25,000 because we was there on a Black Friday or something. I don't know what. But anyway, so it was a smoking deal, so we jumped on it, and we're glad we did. Um... So, we've been looking at Ford Escapes. The new Ford Escape, the 2020 Ford Escape, is going to be out next spring. And it's promising a 30-mile range. And I've done the calculations. And if we bought one, that would do about 80% of our local driving would be in electric mode. And it sounds like a great idea. Um, it has a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery. So it's going to be a little less efficient than our car. It's a slightly bigger vehicle, a little bit heavier, more frontal area. Um, so, but we still, it's, it's, it's rated at 209 total horsepower. And uh, we think, I'm just guessing, but somewhere between 35,000 and 37,000, probably one of them dressed out the way we would want it. Uh, that would be the price to buy a brand new one. So it it, it really looks like a, a great buy and it probably is. 
However, uh, just this last week, uh, Toyota introduced the uh, RAV4 plug-in hybrid electric at the LA Auto Show. And I'm really excited about the specs I've seen on this vehicle. So I wanted to talk to you about that. Here's a picture of it right here. Um, the actual plug-in uh, is on the back. I'm pointing at it with a piece of paper right here. On the opposite side of the vehicle, on the passenger side, is where you put gasoline in. So it's a little different than ours. Our plug-in's up front here, but that would work fine. Uh, that's, that's either place is not an issue, or even in front of the vehicle. Um, it's going to have, um, we don't have any figures. Uh, they like to quote combined like 90 miles per gallon, but that, that's a meaningless figure to me. Uh, 90 miles per gallon is probably the electric uh, uh, gallons equivalent. And they're being a little disingenuous about that. They need an EPA rating on it. We don't have a Moroni sticker or anything else. So let's say the, the vehicle got 36, 37 miles per gallon using gasoline engine only, city highway. It would still be very doable because with 80% of our driving locally in electric mode, we would reduce our total miles of traveling on the gasoline engine per year. So even if it got less gasoline uh, MPG uh, figure, if it had a smaller MPG figure for traveling on gasoline only, you're traveling so many less miles that it more than makes up for the difference and reduces the fuel consumption. Uh, right now we're running around 205 gallons a year and uh, we we think this would probably reduce the uh, gallons per year of, to about by about 30 or 40 gallons. We just don't know. Uh, but the RAV4 Back to the LA Auto Show, and, and you can go to the LA Auto Show videos on YouTube and see all about this vehicle. But uh, it's promising 35, whoops, I lost my screen. It's promising 35, um, let's go ahead and bring the uh, um, Ford Escape up. Now, it's really hard to get a picture of a Ford Escape. But the Ford Escape plugs in in the front, as you can see here. And all the other pictures seem to be of the hybrid. So I, I bookmarked this page to show it to you. Um, thank you. And um, so back to what I was saying, 39 mi miles of electric only range. And the calculations show me that this would account for 90% of our local driving which would reduce our gallons per year down to about 130, 135 gallons per year, which is a 70 some gallon reduction in our, in our gasoline consumption. So, and it has no specs on this either, but it looks like it's gonna have a 16 to 17 kilowatt hour battery pack. So it's gonna take more electricity to charge this beast. No doubt, it's a bigger vehicle, it's, it's it's just got more interior room, more room for groceries, everything else. And their bragging rights on it is 302 horsepower. But if you parse this out, it turns out that the gas engine's about 179. So about half the horsepower, not half, but two-thirds of the horsepower, or one-third of the horsepower is going to the rear wheels is, is electric, two electric motors. And the best, as I can tell, it looks like... The, two 63 horsepower electric motors drive the rear wheels. So this thing is going to be a hot rod and using gas and electricity together it'll do 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. So and as long as it'll come in around 38,000 or so for the variant we want it's doable. The biggest question we have is going to be is Toyota really serious about this vehicle? Will it be available? Will it be playing shell games where it's only available in California and a few other select states? And this creates a big problem with either the Ford or the Toyota. If I have to travel 500 miles to go buy one, that's a serious inconvenience. It's not that I won't do it. It's just uh, 
um, a problem. So the RAV4 advantages is, of course, it has nine more miles of electric range over the Ford. It has literally 93 more horsepower, uh, less total horsepower, by the way. Uh, more interior cargo and passenger space. And finally, it's all-wheel drive. The Ford is an all-wheel drive vehicle unless you buy the plug-in variant. And then it's not. Their electric motor is built into, I guess, a continuously variable transmission setup behind the motor or something. And, and it doesn't, it's just front wheel drive. It doesn't parse out power to the rear wheels. And this is one really big advantage. So the RAV4, if you're driving in all electric mode, would be a rear wheel drive vehicle. And if you're driving with the gasoline engine, you got 302 horsepower in your all-wheel drive. And that is a big deal. And I think it's going to sell like hotcakes. So it may be available, but they may be selling so, so many of them. It may be a problem for me to get it for that reason. Who knows? Uh, I can't, no one can predict anything a year off. And finally, the RAV4 is going to have a 150,000 mile, 10-year battery and drivetrain warranty. And uh, that right there is, is the sweetest offer. Um, so I think I've covered all the, all the issues. Um, we're just hoping that for, you know, they just don't stack so many features on and you're so limited in what you can do that you end up having to spend over 40,000 dollars to buy the vehicle we want we want leather seats and a few other options but other than that we're not uh, we i don't want the variant with the 19 inch wheels and the moon roof or the you know the all glass roof and all this other stuff so that's all i have for you today i think uh as of right now the RAV4 is really going to be the one that we're going to go after. And we're not going to know anything until next summer. That's when it's really going to start being released. The Ford plug-in is going to be released in the spring. And it's a 2020 model. This would be a 2021 model. So, and we're not buying until November of 2020. So, both are doable. And right now I'm really leaning heavily towards the RAV4. And there's been some uh, criticism of Toyota, and I'm one of these people that, that do criticize Toyota for not getting into the electric vehicle game. But for my needs for a plug-in, uh, and this particular vehicle, I think Toyota ought to be rewarded for, them, even if they've committed other sins. So I'll let you go now. Uh, see you on down the road. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.